I'm going to ask you a question I don't know the answer to. Uh, how many times did you hit the floor, uh, do you think, tonight? A lot, man. I'm hurting. I'm hurting. My back is a little sore, but uh, I'll go get some ice and be ready to go on Tuesday. Welcome back to another episode of Lake Show's Finest Redux. We're going strong here. I've Since January, February, I've posted about 30 episodes, so uh, a third of the season when I started about a little over halfway, so that's pretty good. Um, the Lakers beat the Pelicans handily. This might be... Their biggest win margin this season. Might be. I don't know for sure. But I'm Charles Ryan, or KB24 status, or Kobe24 MP3, or simply as self-coined the biggest Laker fan in the world. And this was an interesting game. We're going to talk mostly about the game. We're not going to do any evaluations, but we will dive a little bit deeper into certain players um, in their future. Um which I have done before, but I want to go a little bit, a little bit deeper. Um, so we won by twenty eight, like I said. Uh, Caruso played like a beast. I mean, this fool just kept hitting the floor, taking charges, taking elbows. Rondo took a huge elbow to the frickin' eye, got the sutures, and came back in. But I don't expect everybody to watch this game because it was at three p.m. on a Sunday, so not an ordinary time to watch the Lakers. But um, it was a fun game to watch and. It, uh, while the game was going on, the Duke-MSU game was going on, and um, Magic Johnson was at the the Michigan State, uh, this game in D.C., and I was like, I turned it for a second at the closing, like, five minutes, and it was just so funny, like, Magic's there, because he went to Michigan State, but it's like, bro, like, get the fuck back to L.A., fuck, fuck your, fuck your alma mater, bro, get the fuck back here, <laughs> but yeah, weird time to have a game, and... It was a fun game, like I said. There was really no defense at all, but like the only person that really actually legitimately played well for the the Pelicans was Jaleel Okafor and Julius Randle, and that was about it. I mean, a lot of no names. No Anthony Davis for them, no Drew Holiday. LA zone, Drew Holiday, Campbell Hall High School represent. But yeah, I mean <laughs> There's all these players that wouldn't get minutes anyways, but obviously it's the same situation with the Lakers. Mo Wagner got 28 minutes. Jonathan Williams, 15. Muscala got 19. Muscala had 10 points. I don't think he's... Like, real talk, has he even scored 10 points collectively since he got traded to the Lakers? <laughs> nah, he probably has, but... That was his first points in a while for Muscala. A lot of DMP CDs. But of course, the biggest standout was Caruso with 27 points. 7 for 11 from the field, 5 for 6 from the free throw line, 4 for 4 from 3, 3 rebounds, 6 assists, 4 steals, and 2 turnovers. I think he drew a couple offensive fouls, I'm pretty sure. Um, but like I said, this fool just kept hitting the ground. He, this guy takes it hard, and the best thing about Caruso is he knows how to fall down, if that makes sense. Like, he knows where to land. Because a lot of these players, they'll, like, get caught midair, and then they'll come down on their hand, and, like, they'll injure their hand. They'll, they'll come down on their ass, but, like, they'll fuck up and, like, hit hit their head, you know? Like, do some whiplash shit. But this fool knows exactly how to fall on his ass, and that's it. Has his head up. I know it's kind of a weird thing to say, but <laughs> when this guy falls as often as he does, um, it, it's kind of hilarious that he just gets back up right away. No problem. And he's undersized. He's, like, 6'4". 
think he's listed at six five. Like I, th- I said this before, but there's no way he's actually that height. That's still, that, that's that's giving that's being a little modest. You listed at six five. He's more like six three, six four. Rondo's listed at like six, but Rondo played thirty minutes. Caruso played twenty eight, and I think it's crazy that Rondo played more minutes despite the fact he was pretty much out the majority of the third quarter when he got clocked in the eye. But um. Yeah, back to Caruso. I'm really proud of him. He, uh, I don't think this is like last year where you have players show flashes and they just cut them out. You know, the Lakers just get rid of them and they're just showing him. Like, I think Caruso has a legitimate part in this franchise. And I don't know how long you can keep him on a two way G League contract. I don't know if there's a limit to that. I don't know if you can keep renewing it because obviously last year he was on a two way contract. But I wouldn't mind, you know, giving him a roster spot as the 15th man and having him the third or fourth string point guard. I mean, he knows the plays. He has some chemistry with a lot of the players. And, you know, a lot of these guys on the bench, like Lonzo, LeBron, that were um, injured and somehow, for some reason, took the trip with them to New Orleans, they were really, really cheering him on. And you can tell they genuinely like him. And during Caruso's walk-off interview... (laughs) LeBron like smacked him on the on the ass or like gave him a handshake or some shit. You couldn't really see it was off camera, but yeah, you could tell like LeBron legitimately likes him, and who wouldn't? He work, he works his ass off, but you know there's the, I I don't usually see LeBron like that like liking these fools from that come out of nowhere that often, but yeah. So we'll run down the starting lineup. Lance played 15 minutes, had zero points, 0 for 7 from the field. Not, not a good game for Lance. 0 for 4 from 3. Two rebounds, one assist, one steal, and that was it. Zero points. Big donut. Wagner, though, he played... Wagner didn't play that well, but he had a lot of energy, and um, it was great seeing him, uh, you know, he he hit, hit the floor a lot. And on defense, he was really trying, you could tell. Um, and it's really working, getting that experience. And the one thing I loved about Wagner was he kept shooting no matter what he was one for five and three but he wasn't hesitating and he did his his go-to move at u of m at michigan was like you know face up near the block one dribble to the right then go behind the back to the left and then either do pump fake and drop step or go over and he did that at least once but i liked him trying it out because i never see him i've never seen him do that really uh successfully but um it was fun seeing that. Like I said, that's his go-to thing. He had seven rebounds, one assist, three turnovers, and two blocks. So, yeah, he shot two for eight from the field, one for five from three, like I said. But it was just fun, you know, seeing these guys really put in effort because these guys don't know if they'll be on the team in three months. They don't know if they'll be cut. This is their last two weeks on the team, maybe. You never know. So it's really great seeing them put all in effort but the guy who really played the best in my opinion besides caruso was javel once again javel is just on this grind lately and i don't i don't think it's just him having more opportunities i really think he's legit like <laughs> this guy needs to be resigned i think on a minimum whatever but he had 32 played 32 minutes 23 points nine for 15 from the field 60 percent uh, overall percentage 5 for 7 at the free throw line which is great to see 16 rebounds 3 assists 1 turnover 1 steal and 1 block uh, he had this streak going on where he had multi-block games like 5 games in a row or something but it was snapped short unfortunately but um I like JaVale's effort he had this one play oh man if you guys saw uh, watch the game there was a fast break and Rondo fed it to JaVale at the free throw line, and he extended, got the and one, and dunked that shit. He was, like, one step in the free throw line, and it it was, like, Superman shit. Like, this dude, when he has a full head of steam running, you got to look out because he, he can fucking stretch. It was crazy. Cause like, even as he was coming down the floor, as he was landing, his, he's so long that he could still dunk it. That was lit. Um, but, yeah, we... Lakers have to seriously consider JaVale because I said this before that we don't need to get someone like DeMarcus Cousins. Like when the Rockets had Clint Capella prior to giving him this uh, the extension they gave him, 
he was a cheap guy and he would just rim run defend and um yeah get the blocks and he didn't compel obviously on range but javel reminds me of that some guy that you don't need to pay a lot to just be your center and i think i think he'd be a great guy to maintain next year but we have to see a little bit more about that um yeah so javel played great KCP played really well. I noticed prior to the game starting, uh, the announcers, Stu Lance and Bill McDonald, uh, Stu Lance, like, talked to him for, like, I don't know, 10 seconds before the game started and when he was walking to the court. And he, you could tell he was, uh, Stu was telling KCP, like, keep shooting, bro, because, like, he did. He shot 16 times, the most shots, attempts of anybody in the, on the Lakers and the most attempts of anybody in the game. <laughs> 8 for 16 for 50 percent 19 points he only shot three threes which is great to see that he put it down and took it to the hole and on the fast breaks once again you know taking it strong to the rim he did shoot three threes he missed all of them but it's okay he scored other other places like i said and three for three from the free throw line which is great he's one of our most consistent free throw shooters uh only one rebound one turnover and one steal and now here comes the big boy, Rondo. Great game. 30 minutes, 24 points. 9 for 14 from the field for 64%. 4 for 7 from 3 for 57%. 2 for 2 from the line, 12 assists, 5 rebounds, 2 turnovers, 3 steals. That's a loaded stat line. 24, 12, 2, 3, 24. Sorry, 24 points, 5 rebounds, 12 assists, three, uh, and 3 steals. That's solid especially because, once again, he got popped in the eye when it's out for a little bit. But he didn't have to come in, too. This was crazy. When Rondo came back in the game in the fourth quarter, bro, like, we were up by, like, 20, like, five points or something like that. He didn't have to come in, but that's just the type of guy he is. He's a gamer, you know? But, yeah, so that was rounding out the starting lineup. And the only other player I'm going to bring up, we just stat line, is Reggie Bullock, because I don't know why this guy couldn't be doing this consistently. Uh, you know, after in, in like February and March when we picked him up, but um, 18 points, four for fi- six from the three point line, two for two free throw, three rebounds, three assists, and one steal. So I think Reggie's gone. I'm sorry, Reggie. I don't think you're getting re signed because you didn't show out, and I wouldn't be surprised. Like, who I. <laughs> Someone's going to pick him up because he's a sharpshooter. One of the best three-point percentages in the league prior to the Lakers um, acquiring him from the Pistons. However, I, I, I don't understand why this guy just couldn't hit open threes. But So he, he scored it when it didn't matter. This game didn't matter, obviously. But um, So good effort. I'm going to dive a little bit about JaVale once again and why we need to re-sign him for a minimum. Um, his efficiency is insane he's averaging in the past like two weeks he's averaging at least 70% from the field and there's a couple plays in this game where he literally got he would tip it in like three times in a row like he'd tip it, miss it off the rim tip it, tip it and he just he's just he's so much taller than most of the the Pelicans because the Pelicans go small with Julius at center and Okafor is not that athletic, but this is JaVale's M.O. Just keep grinding, keep tipping, be active. And I, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't re-sign him. Um, six offensive rebounds this game. It's crazy. I don't know if if each tip you get that is counted as a rebound. I think it should be. But like he, like he, half of those rebounds are like on one possession then because he kept tipping and tipping and tipping and attempting to put it back in. But... Yeah, so you gotta get this. You gotta lock up this guy. He's thirty-two years old, I believe. He's thirty-one, so he he still has some good years. I think he has asthma. Uh, I think he has some sort of you know thing. Maybe it is asthma, where like he can't play long stretches. But he did play thirty-two minutes tonight, and Luke knows how to manage his minutes. And I, I unfortunately, if you guys remember mid-year, he had uh, the flu. And that's what really held him out. Maybe if he didn't, 
he'd have these consistent numbers, but I said this before, he's JaVale's played more games with the Lakers this year. Um, I'm sorry, he scored more points with the Lakers this year than he has with the Warriors in the last two years when he won those championships with them. Um, so I think you got to award him. Of course, all the Shaq and the full shit, but you can tell he's more mature now and in a better place. And I don't know if it's the L.A. thing. I don't know if it's having a friend like uh, Kyle Kuzma, who's also from Flint, Michigan, like him. I don't know, but he seems to be more comfortable here and know his role. And I just think you got to give this guy a second opportunity next year to see what happens. Because if he does, because I think we're going to give him a minimum contract. We have to, the way the cap is working for us. If he shows out next year, then the year after that, I give him like a two-year plus one uh, player team option for like it's like a three-year, I don't know, fifteen million, twenty million uh, team option in the third year, something like that. Because he's only gonna get better. Because this year has been one of his most productive years in his career. So you gotta give him credit, improving at such a late stage in his career. Um. So I'm quickly going to talk about the cap real fast. Um, So I did the numbers, and if we, apparently, this is what I believe, I I, I crunched the numbers, the salary cap for the NBA next year is projected to be at $108 And right now, if, um, you know, we renounce the rights to KCP, um, uh, uh, renounce the rights to Rondo, you know, get rid of all these players. We'll only have one, two, three, seven players in the book. Books LeBron, Lonzo, B.I., Wagner, Kuzma, Hart, and Bonga for $66 million. So that leaves 108, that leaves $42 million available. So a max contract from Kyrie would be like $30 million or so. However, this is the however. So we have 42 right now, right? If you get rid of Alonzo's 8.7, you get rid of, you cut Wagner's 2, get rid of Bonga, you'll have, you'll free up enough money in order to trade for AD and sign Kyrie. And let me explain. So if you trade Lonzo, Hart, and like Bonga, and like the pick, you know, that we're going to get. That's about eleven million headed to the Pelicans, and then we receive Anthony Davis is twenty seven. So when we t- when we take that eleven million to the Pelicans, we're at fifty five million, which leaves fifty three million left, and we take on his twenty seven, which takes us down to like hold up like like forty uh, like twenty six, right? So that twenty six can be raised if you cut Wagner's two. And so that's like 28-ish, right? That's where you sign Kyrie. That's where you do it. With that 28 or so to Kyrie, give him like the, the third. Because I don't, because you gave LeBron the max, the 35% of the cap max. I don't know if you're allowed to do another 35% of the cap max. And honestly, I wouldn't. I do the 30% max to Kyrie. And based on those numbers, you can do it. So it would be LeBron at 37, Brand at 7, Kuz at 1.9, Josh at 1.9, and then uh, Kyrie's 30 and AD's 27, right? So we're there. And I don't know if that's Rob and Magic's first option. It would be mine. Because obviously by trading Lonzo, you get back a point guard in Kyrie. And then you re-sign Rondo for veterans minimum. Re-sign JaVale for veterans minimum. I think JaVale would definitely sign. I think Rondo would demand more because I think we're playing, we're paying Rondo right now $9 million flat. The year prior on the Pelicans, it was a minimum. The year prior on the Bulls, it was on a minimum contract. And I think Rondo is such a championship chaser that he would do it. And I, I don't see why he wouldn't accept the veterans minimum. But the point is, financially, it's possible. And I don't see, like, it makes more sense to trade for AD, right, than wait for him to be a free agent next summer 
when we're in LeBron's third year, right? <laughs> in my opinion. And I, I've said this so many times in my earlier podcasts that I truly believe that Lonzo is going to be the one of the greatest Lakers of all time. I said this was the term I would say. He was a five-tool player, like in the MLB, you know. these A lot of these players, when they're like five-tool players or whatever, they have all like the they have everything going for them, and I think he does. However, I've changed my mind because he's just too injury-prone. It's crazy. And I don't think the big baller brand and his dad is that big of a distraction for him. I think he's impervious to those things. However... Last year when he got injured, he didn't have any time to get better over the summer because he was still injured. It looks like that may happen again. He might not have the opportunities to get better um, because he'll be hurt with that bullshit knee, I think. So I think you got to get rid of Lonzo. And, yeah, I mean, that would be my first option. A lot of people were saying, no, I want Clay Thompson. Well... I'd like Clay Thompson too, but I just think Kyrie's younger. Kyrie's a champion. Kyrie and LeBron. I think Kyrie and LeBron are still friends. I think they're on good terms now. And you can't say it for a fact that Kyrie and Le- LeBron didn't go. You know what? I hate Dan Gilbert. I'm gonna go to the Celtics for one year. You're gonna go to L.A. We'll meet in L.A. the year after. You can't say that didn't happen. Bill Simmons said that on his podcast. I, I love Bill Simmons, as you guys probably know. I play him before some podcasts, some audio, but it makes sense. It it does. I mean, Dan Gilbert was an asshole. There's all this bullshit shit. Kyrie's an actor. He was an Uncle Drew, obviously. LA's obviously where that shit's at. Kyrie has a brand, you know, shoes, everything. I, I just think I could see it happening, and that's what I would do. Imagine having a core of LeBron, AD, Kyrie, Brandon Ingram, and Kyle Kuzma. Because I think you have to ship Josh Hart with Lonzo to the Pelicans, along with that pick that we get. And oh, watch. Watch us somehow like get a top four pick. That would be amazing, because the way the new draft uh, lottery system is. But yeah, this pick is valuable. That's why I've been saying we have to lose. But um, the Pelicans have no option but to trade him, and I don't see any reason why we wouldn't get him. Um so, yeah, that's the point. I, I, I don't see how you could have, like, a core of B.I., A.D., Kyrie, and LeBron, and Kuzma. I, I don't I don't see it. And then, like I said, JaVale and Rondo off the bench, you know, resign some others. I, maybe resign Lance on the veterans minimum. Why not, you know? All right. Those are my rants for today. <laughs> I'm Charles Ryan. KB24 status. Chucky, Chucky Atkins, Charles Barkley, the biggest Lakers fan in the world. Um, happy Sunday, and uh, I I think we play the Thunder next, and I, I, I don't see how we're going to win this, to be honest, unless they rest Paul George and uh, Russell. Maybe they'll do that because I know LeBron's hurt. Who knows? All right, take care, and peace out.